In the last lesson, I introduced you to these things called intercepts. And one way that we can graph a line is using slope intercept form like we did in the previous lesson. But in this lesson, we're going to graph it by just finding the two intercepts, the x intercept and the y intercept. And this technique is called standard form. So the technique for standard form is by graphing using the intercepts. And this is what standard form looks like. Uh, algebraically, ax plus by equals c, but basically just a, b, and c are numbers, and we have x and y. So it kind of looks like this equation in letter a. When an equation is written in this form, there are two ways to graph. One would be to do all the movements where you get everything away from the y, move everything over so the y is by itself, and then you can find the slope and intercept. But sometimes that's a lot of work. So what we're going to do in this one, this technique, is we're just going to find the intercepts. Now I told you in the last lesson, the x-intercept has a y-value of 0, and the y-intercept has an x-value of 0. So we're going to use that knowledge to find the two values. So if I want to find the x-intercept, I'm going to make y equal to 0. So I take this equation, and instead of y, I put 0. Negative 2x plus 3 times 0 equals negative 6. So that just gives, I mean, like this cancels out, right? So then I just have negative 2x equals negative 6. So then the x value is 3. I did my inverses in my head. I didn't show them. So now I go up to the x-intercept spot, and I put a 3. Now I'm going to find the y-intercept by doing something very similar, but now I'm going to make the x value equal to 0. <clears throat> so I write the equation, negative 2 times 0 plus 3y equals negative 6. So now instead of x, I put 0. So this just cancels out, and I get 3y equals negative 6, so the y value is negative 2. So that means that the y-intercept is 0, negative 2. That's all you need because now we go to our four-quadrant grid and we just plot those two dots. So I'm going to plot 3, 0 and 0, negative 2. And you see that's the line. The only other thing I need to do is just write the equation near it. But it saves a lot of time when you can just plug in 0. All right, let's just do another one, example B. We're going to find our x-intercept. And that's when the y value is 0. And then we'll do our y-intercept. That's when the x value is 0. So here we go. Instead of y, I'm going to put 0. So I have x plus 3 times 0 equals negative 3. So that just cancels because anything times 0 is 0. So you just get x equals negative 3. So nice and simple, the x-intercept is at negative 3, 0. Now I do it all over again, but with a 0 in the um, x spot. So in order to find the y-intercept, I'm going to make x equal to 0. So 0 plus 3y equals negative 3. So obviously that goes away, and I just get y equals negative 1. So the y-intercept here is negative 1. Last step is to just plot those points. I'm going to plot negative 3, 0 as my x-intercept and 0, negative 1 as my y-intercept and then just make the line. Uh, x plus 3y equals negative 3. Alright, so that's the standard form technique. Alright, our last one is a word problem. You have $6 to spend on apples and bananas. The equation 1.5x 
plus 0.6y equals 6 represents this situation where x is the number of pounds of apples and y is the number of pounds of bananas. We have to graph the equation and also interpret the intercepts. And if you don't know what interpret means, you can look back at any of our previous lessons. So in order to graph, I'm going to do my intercepts. I'm not going to be as detailed as I was in the last two because um, I think we kind of get the idea. So I'm going to plug in 0 for x to get the y-intercept. This cancels out. I get 0.6y equals 6. When I divide by 0 0.6, I get the y value is 10. So that means that my y, my x-intercept is 0, 10. Let's do the other intercept. Now I'm going to plug in 0 for y. Oh, sorry. This is the y-intercept. I wrote x. Shame on me. Okay, so now I'm doing the x-intercept. So 1.5x plus... 0.6 times 0 equals 6. This cancels out, and I just have 1.5x equals 6. Divide by 1.5, and I get x equals 4. So that means that the x-intercept is 4, 0. So a lot of times, as I've said before in word problems, we are usually only in quadrant 1, and we are again in this time because you can't have negative pounds of apples or negative pounds of bananas. So I've just got my first quadrant. Let's plot 0, 10. I believe that's here. And 4, 0. Make the line. I'm not going to extend it with arrow tips because it wouldn't make sense for it to go into the negatives. Let me just write the equation. And then, oh, you know what? I should put the labels on the axes because it's a story problem. Um, so x is apples and y is bananas. So let's put that on. So this represents apples, right? Pounds of apples, LB, and bananas, LB for pounds. <clears throat> So we graph the equation, check. Now I have to interpret the intercepts. So I already have the intercepts marked at 10 and 4, but what does that mean? So let's look at what 0, 10 meant first. So 0, 10 stands for 0 pounds of apples and 10 pounds of bananas. So that's the like basic way of saying it. You could say if you buy 10 pounds of bananas, you don't have any money left for apples. However you want to say it is fine. This is perfectly okay. Zero pounds of apples, 10 pounds of bananas. But it represents that one value is at zero and then you tell what number the other value is. So then we just switch it up and we do it for the other one. 4, 0. And 4, 0 is just the reverse. It means that you have apples, but you don't have any bananas. So if you want to spend $6, you could only buy 4 pounds of apples and no bananas. However you want to say the sentence is okay. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.